skip Kamara. Well, I'll tell you, that's what the Rambam wrote. The Rambam wrote in his Hakdama to Mishnah Torah, he says, now that I have written Mishnah Torah, right? Uh, Mishneh Torah literally means the second Torah. And the rabbis change it later on. They call it the Yarha Hazaka because they felt it was kind of chutzpah to call it Mishnah Torah. But he says, now that I've codified Halakha in 14 volumes, whatever he says, now you don't have to study Talmud anymore. Because back then, people used to study Talmud to know what the halacha was. But now, we know what the halacha is because we have codifications, whether it's Mishneh Torah, Shulchan Aruch, I guess if you're Ashkenazi, the Ramah, Mishneh Burav, your Chabad, uh, like Shulchan Aruch Harav. So, what's the point of studying Chazal? Now, I do, I mean, study the Talmud for different reasons. Mainly the Mishnah, just because I've, I've um, I'm part of a project and that is quite controversial, and that is, again, I'm a halakhic purist, so for something to actually be halakha, it has to come from the Mishnah. Most people don't know that. Most people think that if it appears by by a marayim, i.e. in the Gemara, it could still be halakha. That's actually not true. So, I, I try to teach halakha straight from the Mishnah, and marayim are very important, but the job of marayim is essentially to bring down Bryce's uh, to to challenge Tanaim because these are Tanaim worked as well. Also, the Sefarda, the Sefri, Mechilta, these are all Bryces. Um, Tosefta's are also Bryces. But this is something that most people don't study. And I think that what we do today as Jews regarding Torah Shabbat Peh, if you only went by the Mishnah, is probably half, half of what we do. In other words, we've added a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. Okay, from, uh, I don't know, let's see, I mean, from getting drunk on Purim to counting extra, you know, women counting like, uh, whatever, like a Zavagadola, you know, I mean, for Nida, uh, I mean, having a bracha to light candles, uh, I, there's so many things they've added that doesn't appear in the Mishnah. Um, yeah, so this is, whatever, I try not to say this over too much. Right. Um, I mean, Paul's going to know what I'm talking about, but I mean, who am I? I'm just a convert, right? So let's see. Arab scene. Yeah, but besides, for Halacha, Gemara teaches you valuable lessons and methods for critical thinking. South Koreans agree with you because they've introduced Gemara study into their curriculum and they don't even believe necessarily in the God of Israel. I think it's, I think it's silly. I think there's other books that could help you think critically. And I I don't, I mean, I'm not against people learning it. I'm against people in some way trying to come to God through it. There's many people who leave Judaism every year because all they know is that system. The system of, uh, because they start kids on Gemara very early, very early. Um, and they shouldn't. I mean, kids should have a basis in in Chumash, in, in Nach, in the Mishnah before hopping into Gemara. And they don't. So they never really build that relationship with God. So when people leave Judaism, they leave it because it's just so dry. And they've just been arguing things. And it's not really arguing because no one argues when they learn Gemara. Not from a halakhic perspective. It's a lie. When people are saying, oh, Jews are always arguing. That's not true. If you go to the yeshiva and then there's like a maggot shear there and he's trying to explain to you what the Gemara says. And you happen to disagree with what's the accepted halacha or anything, they'll probably kick you out. Right? So yeah. You could disagree, uh, but once they give you the response that, that you asked for, you have to take it and stay quiet. And this is just the way it is. Um, now, on your Shabbos table with your buddies, maybe during Mishmar, I don't know. Perhaps you guys could, could, could say heretical stuff there. I'm all, I mean, for me, heresy doesn't exist, okay? For sure not on this show. Halacha is halacha. For something to be halacha, it has to come from Chazal. Now, there's ambiguous statements by Chazal. That means you're telling me if someone went by Shammai in one area and by Hillel in another, right? That the one who went by Shammai is wrong because we're going to go by Hillel. Here we go. Back to my previous statement. Everything has to go back to the Mishnah. Do you know the Mishnah doesn't say that we only go by Hillel? That only appears by a Marayim. Now, the story about the Bosco when they were in Yavne, uh, it's... It supposedly takes place in the time of uh, like of Tanaim, but it only appears as a medrash by a marayim. So th that means it's not really true. 
that if someone was adamant, and there's people like this, some people stand when they say the Shema, there's, there's many things that they go by, by Shammai, and people tolerate it. But it's, that's like more in Israel. In, in Israel, people tolerate more things than in America. In America, if, like, if there's like one shul in your town, and you know, people try to act like Judaism is, is so monolithic, and it's not true. You know, so that's when the rabbi will try to kick you out just because you happen to disagree with them. So that's why it's, it benefits you guys to live in a community that has more than one synagogue. Just if you get upset, if you get one rabbi upset, you could go to a different shul. All right.